What if I told you there's now a shot, only twice a year, that blocks 99.9% .9 of new HIV infections? In a groundbreaking move that could reshape the landscape of HIV prevention, the US FDA has officially approved Yes2Go, Lenacopavir, a twice-yearly injectable medication that offers up to 99.9% .9 protection against HIV. Developed by Gilead Sciences, this long-acting pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrePi treatment is being hailed as a game-changer in the ongoing fight to end the HIV epidemic. What is Yes2Go Lenacopavir? Yes2Go is the first capsid inhibitor approved for HIV prevention. Unlike daily oral PrEP medications such as Truvada or Descovy, Yes2Go only needs to be administered once every six months, making it the first and only twice-yearly PrEP option in the U.S. The medication works by targeting the HIV capsid, a protein shell that protects the virus's genetic material and is essential to its replication. By disrupting this process, lenacapavir prevents HIV from multiplying and establishing an infection in the body. Backed by science and successful clinical trials, Yes2Go's approval was based on robust clinical trial data from two major global studies. Purpose One focused on women in South Africa and Uganda and showed 100% protection with zero new HIV infections among participants receiving lenacopavir. Purpose 2, which included cisgender men, transgender women, transgender men, and non-binary people in regions including the US, South America, and Europe, showed a 99.9% efficacy rate. Out of over 2,100 participants, only two contracted HIV while on the injectable PrEP. Now that you've got the headline, it's time to dive deeper. We're breaking down everything you need to know about this groundbreaking HIV prevention shot in today's podcast. So let's head over and get into it. Welcome to the deep dive. We, uh, we sift through the noise articles, studies, expert takes to pull out what really matters on complex topics, give you the key insights. And today, wow, we have a big one. We're diving into a huge development in the fight against HIV. It's the recent U.S. FDA approval of uh, Lenacopavir, you might see called Yes2Go. Okay, so let's get into it. Our goal here is simple, give you a really clear, concise understanding of this new drug. What is it? How well does it actually work? Because the numbers are pretty stunning. But also, what are the hurdles? You know, getting it to people globally. And what does it all mean for the future, for HIV prevention, maybe even for vaccine research? We've got the sources lined up, trials, articles, expert views, right? Here's where it gets really interesting, I think. For, well, for decades, HIV prevention usually meant taking a pill every single day. And look, that's a tough routine for anyone to stick to perfectly for all sorts of reasons. But imagine, what if you only needed two shots a year? Just two injections. That's the promise of lenacopavir. Or yes, two go. It's this new, long-acting drug. We just got the green light from the US FDA on June 18th. We're looking at updates as of June 20th, 2025, specifically for HIV prevention. Adults and adolescents, it comes from Gilead Sciences, and honestly, it feels like a potential game changer. It really does. And what's fascinating is how it works. And, um, its backstory, really. It was actually first approved by the FDA back in 2022, but not for prevention initially. It was for treating people living with HIV whose virus had uh, become resistant to other drugs, you know, the really tough cases. Oh, okay. So like a last line of defense kind of thing. Exactly. But while they were developing it for that, the Gilead scientists noticed something pretty remarkable. They saw it stays active in the body for a really long time. And crucially, it messes with the virus in several different ways, hitting multiple steps in its replication cycle. So it's not just attacking one specific part of the process. It's hitting it from different angles. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Imagine the virus trying to, I don't know, build a house. Lena Capavir isn't just knocking down one wall. It's messing with the foundation, the framing, maybe the electrical wiring, too. This multi-target thing makes it super effective and also harder for the virus to develop resistance against it. Tomas Silar, he's the senior VP of virology at Gilead. He described this aha moment. He said, uh, we observed a fantastic effect after a single injection. Basically, it protected non-human primates from acquiring HIV. That's when we realized we really needed to get full speed and full force behind the prevention idea. It was a real pivot for them. That is incredible. So it starts as this specialized treatment tool, and then they realize, hang on, this could actually stop infections from happening in the first place. But the safety standard, I mean, it must be incredibly high for a prevention drug, right? For people who don't have HIV, how did they navigate that? You're absolutely right. That's a critical point. Jared Baton, Gilead's VP of HIV development, he stressed that, saying, the bar for safety for people who don't have the disease is quite high. You can't expose healthy people to unnecessary risk. The good thing was, they already had a strong foundation from its use and treatment. 
They knew its pharmacology, its antiviral activity, its safety profile in people with HIV, and it's the same drug but used differently. For prevention in HIV-negative folks, linocapavir can stand alone. It's like this powerful shield. But for treatment in someone with HIV, you typically combine it with other drugs. That helps stop the virus from finding ways around it, developing resistance. That makes sense. So it's versatile. A solo shield for prevention, part of a team for treatment. Precisely. It really highlights its adaptability. Okay, so let's talk real-world protection. The numbers. Because we're not just talking a small improvement here, are we? The headline figure is, well, it's staggering. Over 99.9% .9 reduction in HIV transmission risk. I mean, when you see that number, it's almost hard to believe. Our sources called it functionally akin to a powerful vaccine. That's how effective it seems to be. It is. It's why Science Magazine called it their breakthrough of the year in 2024. That's a huge deal in the scientific world. So what did the actual trials show? How did they get to that number? Right. So the results came out in the New England Journal of Medicine. Really prestigious. There were two main, very large trials. The first one involved over 2,000 cisgender women in sub-Saharan Africa. And the result, zero infections, a 100% reduction. Wow. Zero. Yeah. And over 2,000 people in high-risk area. Exactly. Zero infections in the lenocapavir group. That's just almost unheard of in prevention trials. And it clearly showed it was superior to the daily oral pill Truvada, which has been sort of the standard for oral PRP. Okay, that's one trial. What about the other one? The second trial looked at over 2,000 men who have sex with men and also gender-diverse individuals. Similar story. In that group, they recorded only two infections among those receiving lenocapavir. That works out to a 99.9% .9 prevention rate. Again, significantly better than Truvada. So across different populations, incredibly high effectiveness. Yes. And it directly tackles that huge issue we mentioned earlier, adherence. You know, PEP, the daily pills, they've been around for over a decade. They work great if people take them consistently. But that daily adherence has been a major roadblock globally. Lenocapavir, just two shots a year. That could fundamentally change the game. It takes away that daily burden, that reminder, offers more discretion, too. Yeah, it simplifies things massively. Less mm -hmm. chance of missing doses, less mental energy spent on it. Yeah. Were there any major downsides, side effects people should know about? Well, the side effects reported in the trials were mostly mild, generally manageable. Things like reactions at the injection site, maybe some soreness, swelling. And some people reported headaches or nausea. But nothing seems severe enough to really outweigh the prevention benefits. It seems pretty well tolerated overall. Okay, so incredible science, incredible results, but, and it feels like there's always a but with big breakthroughs like this. We hit the wall of accessibility. The sources are clear. Despite the amazing results, there's a lot of caution, a lot of optimism being tempered by the drug's expected high cost. Yeah, this is the elephant in the room, isn't it? Will this amazing drug actually reach the people who need it most? That's the big question advocates and global health groups are asking. We saw this before to some extent. There's another long acting shot, cabotegravir. It's injected every two months, approved back in 2021, but it costs tens of thousands of dollars a year. And because of that, frankly, it hasn't made the huge global splash many had hoped for. And what are we looking at for lenocapavir, for yes to go? Well, Gilead hasn't officially announced the prevention price yet. But analysts are estimating the U.S. launch cost could be around $25,000 per year. Just for comparison, the price for using it as an HIV treatment right now is listed at $39,000 a year. So maybe lower for prevention, but still really high. $25,000 a year for prevention? That just seems prohibitive for so many people and certainly for entire health systems in many parts of the world. You mentioned advocates being concerned. What are they saying specifically? I saw that quote from Kevin Frost at Amphor. Right. Kevin Frost, the CEO of Amphor, it was a stark quote. He said, we just built the best plane in the world, but unfortunately tore up all the runways. Wow. What does he mean by runways? He's talking about the infrastructure needed to actually deliver the drug. He points to funding cuts to key programs like USAID, PEPFAR, the big US AIDS relief program, and the NIH. These are the systems that support testing, counseling, distribution, healthcare workers. Without that strong infrastructure, he worries Lena Capavir will never have a shot coming out of the gate on a mass scale. It's not just about the drug's price tag itself. That's the whole system around it. Exactly. And then you have Andrew Hill from Liverpool University. He looked at production costs and suggested it could potentially be mass produced for as little as $25 per person per year. $25 versus potentially $25,000. That's quite a gap. A huge gap. 
Hill argues that even high-income countries will not be able to afford wide-scale use of Lena Capavira at prices above U.S. $20,000 per year, let alone lower-income countries. And Winnie Bianima from the UN, she put it very forcefully. She said, to charge 1,000 times more for a medicine with pandemic-ending potential would be abhorrent, and added, we cannot end AIDS with medicines that are so costly. It's a powerful moral argument. So you have the science, the potential, and then this massive economic and ethical challenge. Is Gilead doing anything to address this? Are there plans for lower income countries? Yes, they are taking steps. It's important to mention that. Gilead has struck deals royalty-free licensing agreements with six generic drug manufacturers. The idea is these companies can produce cheaper generic versions of lanacapavir specifically for prevention use in about 120 low- and middle-income countries. Okay, so that's a positive step for access in those regions, at least potentially. It is. It's a mechanism designed to bring the cost down significantly in places where it's needed most. And we know access matters. There was a report in The Lancet HIV looking at the U.S. between 2012 and 2022. States that really embraced PIP, made it accessible, saw new infections drop by 38 percent. States that didn't make PIP as available, they actually saw a 27 percent increase in new infections over that same period. So the link between access and impact is incredibly clear. That data really drives it home. Access isn't just a nice to have, it's fundamental to actually reducing infections. Yeah. So shifting gears slightly, beyond just preventing infections day to day, how is something like Lena Capavir changing the bigger picture? You mentioned it might even affect the search for an HIV vaccine. Yeah, that's a really interesting sort of ripple effect. While lenacapavir is absolutely not a vaccine, its effectiveness in preventing infection is so high, it acts very much like one in practice. And this comes after, what, 40 years? over 40 years of intense research, and scientists still haven't managed to develop a broadly effective HIV vaccine. It's been incredibly challenging. Dr. David Ho at Columbia University, a major figure in HIV research, he put it bluntly. So far, the candidate vaccines do not show this kind of promise for preventing HIV infection. We're nowhere close to an efficacious vaccine. Right. So if vaccine candidates aren't showing anywhere near 99.9% .9 effectiveness, but we now have a drug that does, mm -hmm. what does that do to vaccine trials? Well, it creates a real ethical puzzle. Think about designing a new vaccine trial. You typically need a control group, people who get a placebo, to compare against. But if you have options like oral PEP, and now especially Lena Capavir, that are proven to be so effective at preventing HIV, is it ethical anymore to give someone a placebo? Essentially leaving them unprotected, especially if they're at high risk. Ah, I see. You can't knowingly withhold such effective prevention. Exactly. It makes designing those trials incredibly difficult. As Dr. Ho suggested, it might even take a bit of the wind out of the sails of vaccine research, not because vaccines aren't needed, but because proving they work effectively and ethically becomes much harder when you have such good preventative drugs. That's fascinating. The success of one approach potentially complicates another long-sought goal. It's paradoxical. It is. We're sort of entering an era where these long-acting injectables are blurring the lines, performing almost like pharmacological vaccines. Okay, but even with a long-acting shot, there are still practical hurdles on the ground, right? It's not like just picking up pills. Definitely. It's still an injection. It has to be given by a healthcare provider. That means clinic visits twice a year. And crucially, people need an HIV test before each shot. That's to make sure they haven't acquired HIV since the last injection. Because if they have, taking lenacopravir alone could lead to drug resistance. Right, because it needs to be combined with other drugs for treatment. Precisely. So those requirements, clinic visits, regular testing can still be significant barriers, especially for marginalized groups or in places with limited healthcare resources. Are there developments aiming to overcome those hurdles? Yes, there's hope for improvement. Hui Yang from the Global Fund mentioned hoping for a version people could inject themselves, like an insulin injection. That would remove the need for clinic visits just for the shot. That would be a huge step. Absolutely. And Dilead is also reportedly working on an even longer acting version, maybe just once a year. Imagine that. One shot a year for near complete protection. That would be truly revolutionary in terms of simplicity and adherence. Okay. This has been, well, a really illuminating deep dive. We've seen the incredible science behind Lena Capavir, this uh, truly remarkable effectiveness, near 100% protection with just two shots a year. We've also grappled with that stark reality, the huge challenge of cost and access, getting this breakthrough from the lab into the hands of everyone who needs it globally. It's this a classic tension between scientific achievement and real-world implementation. 
We really hope this deep dive has given you, our listener, a clearer, maybe richer understanding of this pivotal moment. It's genuinely a groundbreaking advance, no doubt about it, but it's facing some very real, very significant hurdles. And it leaves us thinking, you know, when we would develop tools this powerful, what's our collective responsibility? Governments, companies, healthcare systems, individuals. How do we ensure breakthroughs like Elena Capivir actually fulfill their potential? Not just helping some, but truly reaching everyone and helping to finally end the global epidemic. What do you think? What's the single biggest obstacle we still need to clear for this drug to truly change the world? Something to ponder.